guys okay so we are live uh welcome 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 if you are new to my channel my name is Leela michelle uh please feel free to subscribe and then hit the bell so that anytime i upload any new content you will be the first to find out to know about it um and for those of you all like i say that are not new to this but are true to this thank you so much for returning um supporting me Still, um, like I say, for those of you all that are not going to catch this live, that's perfectly all right, too. Um, usually any live chat uh, comments you could catch afterwards. It takes a little bit for the video to actually process. But after the live processes, uh, even if you don't catch this live when, while it's happening, you should be able to at least follow up on the, the comments as they go. So... Today's topic, if you cannot see already, and again, I'm moving my head out the way. Um, so this is the Martin Bashir. Well, actually, I should have really had, I could have had, I should say, I could have had uh, Maury Povich's photo up there because he covered, he actually did a, um, you know, where he showed the footage, Michael Jackson's footage um, of the Martin Bashir interview, but it was so much that was cut out. Um, and as it says here, the interview you were never supposed to see um, because that's the way uh, Martin Bashir intended it uh, to be, unfortunately. So, um, boy, but before I dive into that very quickly, um, because I'm not sure how long this live is gonna run, uh, please feel free to check me out on other platforms uh, while TikTok is still up. You guys can check me out on there for Le under Leela Michelle. Um, give me a follow. A lot of content that I upload, like I, I say I am a celebrity entertainment content creator. Most of it, um, or a lot of it is Michael Jackson centered, but I do cover other uh, celebs and other entertainment. And like I say, I call myself that not to be so extra, even though it sounds so over the top. Literally, the content that I cover is covering celebrities and is covering uh, entertainment. So, but the cool part is usually content that I upload somehow, one way or another kind of loops back to uh, MJ anyway, all right? Because, just because. Um, so feel free to, to follow me on TikTok. You guys can also uh, follow my Instagram and that's under I am Lila Michelle. It's not a whole lot uh, because I just recently started that up. I had had it before, but it was for different projects. Um, now I'm just trying to get back into the rhythm of uploading a little bit more, but it is, my Instagram is under I am Lila Michelle. But enough of that. I just wanted to get that out of the way because I hate when I don't do it quick enough. Uh, hey, what's up, Jay? Hey, hey, hey. Shout out to Jay. And like I said, you guys will be able to see the comments uh, down below um, beneath. And um, also to shout out to Jay because he had mentioned that this was one that was definitely worth giving a reaction on. And I, this for me was a bit, I hope I didn't, I got my, uh, <laughs> sorry, I have my microphone here. Um, but yeah, this was a rough one uh, for me to watch. I'm kind of a softy anyway, for those of you all that don't know. I'm a little bit of a softy, um, but this was this was rough um, to watch in that to, it, it was what Bashir did with his interview was such a hack job. It was really criminal in a lot of ways, in my opinion. Hey, shout out to Paris. Hey, Paris Jackson. All right. Hey, hey. Um, but yeah, so like I was saying, like, so for this one, I have seen portions. Well, the main uh, portion of this, uh, you know, the footage you weren't intended to see, the portion that I did see um, was the portion that where Bashir's kind of interrogating Michael Jackson a bit on his facial change and all that stuff. Uh, you guys know I'm blind and I got the fluorescent, so forgive me. I'm sorry. Like, let me see. Let me see. Uh, flew under the radar. 
Oh. How's this in? Yeah, it did. This did. Um, you said this one. It did. And this is the bet too, because you already hit some points, Jay. And I'm sorry if I look so whatever, because I'm getting so close to the cameras, but you guys know I'm blind. Um, but whatever. Um, but yeah, this is one that actually flew under the radar, and I, I don't really get how that happened. This came out in 2003. Same year, and like I say, if I get something wrong, you guys, please please feel free to correct me in the comments, but this came out the same year that the Martin Bashir interview uh, came out. Yet this one, basically, just like what Jay said, just kind of flew under the radar. Like, this didn't get as much coverage as Bashir's. And why is that? You know, personally, obviously, because the media, a lot of tabloids and the press wanted to shape and present Michael Jackson in a certain way. And the real footage that's shown in this uh, video or shown in this presentation, because I think it might've been like a two part um, or two hour or something like that by Maury uh, Povich, where Michael Jackson, when this interview took place, Michael Jackson also in Bashir had his cameraman and all that. I'm, I'm sharing this for, you know, some of you guys I'm sure have already seen this because I know a lot of you all know your stuff, right? And I'm gonna uh, be nice. I'm not gonna say any cuss words, but you all are on it. You all know your stuff. But I'm just kind of giving, um, kind of debriefing for those of you all who have not seen, fully seen. And maybe you guys just saw it in portions like what I had uh, seen prior to actually sitting down and watching the full um, unchopped up, I'll just put it that way, unchopped up hack job that Bashir had done. Uh, Bashir, wait, huh? Interviewed MJ between 2002 and 2003. Yeah, I think it was 2003, if I'm not mistaken. Um, at least the, the different, what I've seen covered says 2003, but maybe it was 2002. Um, but this is supposed to be in 2003 as well. So the time gap on it, I'm not sure. I don't know uh, what month he did Bashir's and then uh, Maury was able to uncover and show the real footage of the interview. But, um, but yeah, so the, how the truth was even able to come out and unfortunately, just like what Jay said, a lot of that truth did kind of fly under the radar because apparently the press that wasn't on the agenda to really uh, have that shared and publicized and not to the degree that it really should have been, in my opinion. Uh, and you guys, make sure you check out, you guys know I'm, I'm, I'm blind, but I'm, I'm still reading the comments, but you guys make sure you guys check out, uh, Jay is sharing a lot of good information in the comments down below. Um, and it is unfortunate. It's really unfortunate uh, that the truth came out, but what apparently what the media was interested in really exploiting and showing and was more of what Bashir had, the hack job that Bashir had come up with, the edited hack job that he did with his interview. Um, but luckily, the reason why the truth was able to come out was because Michael Jackson also had his own personal uh photographer um guy cameraman that was documenting that was also documenting the interview as well and like they said in that like the cameraman was saying it wasn't like they were doing it like undercover or anything like that Bashir was aware that Michael Jackson also had his own cameraman um documenting the interview just like Bashir had his what I'm thinking, and I think that's also what was shared in the the documentary, was that apparently Bashir forgot that Michael Jackson had his cameras rolling as well. Had to, because it's shown and it's so disgusting to me, uh, the, the night and day, like you hear, and this was caught on Michael Jackson's uh, footage, you could hear Bashir He's praising Michael Jackson. Oh, wow. You know, he's saying all the right stuff. And then, and not just the right stuff, but the truth. 
he's sharing that, and then he turns around. Uh, I can't see, but uh, only because I'm being blinded, but I will go back to the comments in just a minute. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Jay is saying some good stuff. Yeah, he was smart in having his own cameras. Uh, but they, they say that uh, Michael Jackson just usually would do that anyway, maybe because down the line, so he would have his own footage, not necessarily if something goes left like it did with Bashir, but just, you know, I don't know, maybe if he ever wanted to turn around and do his own thing with the footage, he could. Um, but they claim that Michael Jackson, that was something that he did regularly anyway, but it, he was very fortunate and very smart to have had his own cameraman because this was just a huge hack job that was done. Bashir is, like I say, praising Michael Jackson left and right. And then what he puts out is so edited. And he also gives his own commentary. If you watch Bashir's uh, interview with Michael Jackson, his, his portion or his version of the documentary, a lot of it is him um, giving his own, you know, comments, his commentary, and just saying a lot of really disgusting things that are completely opposite of what Michael Jackson's cameras caught and was really the true interview unedited and unchopped up like what uh, Bashir, I shouldn't say attempted to do because he did it. Not only did he do it, but it has such a huge backlash, negative backlash on Michael Jackson that right after, very shortly after his um, interview with Bashir, as you guys know, um, his home was raided and all that, all that stuff. Um, all that was thrown, you know, court trial and all that, it was just horrible. And they say who was uh, testifying against Michael, but who was called to testify uh, against Michael, but Bashir who showed up. But anyway, okay, so let me get into the details. I'm sorry, I'm just kind of giving my little overview without really getting into it. But it was different things that were covered. Um, you know, it was talked about Michael's surgeries, his children in disguises. Um, you know, they talk about the Neverland Ranch, Debbie Rose, she was able to speak and uh, really just be very candid, extremely candid. Um, and it's sad. It's sad, in my opinion, because Michael Jackson allowed himself to be very vulnerable, very open, uh, extremely candid, very open with Bashir. And for Bashir to take so, you know, what Michael Jackson, a lot of things that Michael Jackson said and did and then just take it and completely twist it like he did was sad. That's that's really sad for a lot of people. I don't know about you guys, at least for me, it's not always easy for me to be vulnerable. Um, and I can only imagine like Michael Jackson allowed him into his home, showed him everything, showed him uh, the Neverland Ranch. And I get too, because back in the day, I will say that I didn't, I, you know, I wondered to myself, I'm like, why doesn't he just, you know, just stop? I didn't think that Michael Jackson did any of those things, but I'm like, he really needs to just Keep the kids away. Just keep the kids away because every time somehow it's like backlash with him, um, you know, this allegation, that allegation, like why does he, he shouldn't even let the kids uh, come to the Neverland uh, Ranch. And that's what I used. But I see why with the unedited version of the documentary, I see why Michael Jackson continued to be a humanitarian, why he continued to, to have busloads of children to come and to visit the, the ranch like that because like that was a huge impact. He, he, even though he was getting a lot of negative press, a lot of scrutiny, and I'm going to check out the comment in just a second, but even though he had such a negative backlash, um, still he was impacting children in such a positive way, such a positive way. Um, children from the inner city, uh, make a wish foundation. Like kids were very, very happy. And, and too, just to be around uh, Michael Jackson. So he saw what he was doing had such a positive impact on the children. And he knew like everything that was saying that was being said about him was false. Um, but it's just sad that he was showed that to Bashir and he still turned around and just, 
twisted it. It was very sad. Uh, you couldn't even finish the short film for one more chance. And his house got destroyed right there. That's sad. Yeah, you guys, make sure you read. Um, yes, yeah, very sad. Very sad. Um, like I said, I'm a bit of a softy. And there was a, a portion. I was watching a, a little bit of it. Um, at my job at my desk and I was a portion where I'm kind of like this I'm like okay I don't want to get too misty um, at work but that was really it's it, you know like I say just very sad um, like I say I see why Michael Jackson held his ground kind of dug his knees I'm not dug his knees dug his heels into the ground and did not um, succumb to all of the scrutiny where he said, okay, well, I'll just don't bring any children around me because what he was doing was huge. It was impacting a lot of kids in positive ways. And the press typically, at least from what I saw, at least, you know, whatever, back in the day, always seemed to, in a one-sided way, show Michael Jackson as just giving a preference to little boys or just giving preference to, you know, whatever, Caucasian little... No, like Michael Jackson, he had children of, of all different races, different backgrounds to come and enjoy uh, Neverland, to enjoy the rides, enjoy the animals, you know, more almost like a field trip sort of thing. It wasn't always sleepovers in, in the way that the press projected it. And it was really sad, really, really sad to watch. Um, uh huh. Yeah. Sorry, you guys. I'm trying to see here. Uh, yeah, I, well, I'm, I believe I saw most of what you're saying and I'm going to go back. Um, like I say, it's a little hard because I got the fluorescent, um, little vanity light here that makes it sometimes a little bit hard to see, but I'm so glad for the comments, um, because this is what live is about. And, uh, like I say, for you guys that catch this live after, and it's not so live, it's after the fact, please still read the live comments because um, Jay is leaving some really good information into the chat. Um, but yeah, I agree. A lot of other celebrities, Michael Jackson was incredibly strong, even though like we say um, that, you know, because he had such a, a nice like temperament and, and this and that, that uh, he was, and he was bullied by a lot of times reporters and press with even the type of questions that, he was asked so it came off like Michael Jackson um or it could have come off like Michael Jackson you know wasn't tough enough to say. like Michael Jackson was extremely tough to take the level of scrutiny you know he was just always very polite and very um you know he just had a lot of class very elegant very uh classy with a lot of the nasty types of questions that he would get from reporters and from the press, but it wasn't, you know, the way he would answer things wasn't because he was weak because most celebrities or just people in general uh, would have, just like what Jay was saying, most celebs probably would have spazzed out or just whatever. They would, they would not have been able to take that level of scrutiny and, and, and just being demonized really you know it, it was more than like a character assassination like they really did a hack job on michael jackson but regardless of all of that he still made sure that he did not stop doing what he was doing he knew that what he was doing still had a positive impact um but just very sad very sad uh the boy and i really do encourage you guys and i'm so sorry i realized after the fact that i did not leave the reference links um in the previous video or was a video before last it was just before i kind of got sick but i'm going to add that and then to this i'm actually going to leave a link or a few links to um so that you guys are able to access the full you know what you weren't supposed to see and then you guys can come up with your own opinion um of it but i'm sorry jay said some more stuff i couldn't see his class comes from his era. Yeah, I think I think his era did have a lot to do with that. Um, I can't. I mean, I'm gonna go back to it, but I really do think that his, you know, he was brought up in a time where 
you know, now we have celebs that are probably more on the outrageous side or what not outrageous, but you know, they're not so worried about, you know, being polite. Like if they're asked something that, or something is said to them, some celebs will, you know, flip off the reporter or whatever, just, but he came from an era where, you know, he's supposed to be polite to the press. He's supposed to be polite to his fans. And I think that was just also genuine on Michael Jackson's part, because even though that was the era he came from, there was still other opportunities, other celebs at that time that still probably were a little bit more aggressive with the press, but he always kept a very positive attitude, regardless of the fact of, you know, how he was just turned upside down, inside out uh, by the media. Very sad, very sad, but I think that that was Michael Jackson's opportunity or he was trying to make it an opportunity to be more open in which he was, but it just got twisted to the worst possible degree um, by Bashir. And then that just, uh, t just unleashed a, a tornado um, of chaos for Michael Jackson, you know, post that interview. So sad, but I think MJ's intention was to be more candid. Like he said, he reads stuff all the time that's just not true, um, but why bring attention to it? And I understand that, I get that. I actually, you know, if it is some uh, drama that's going on, um, a lot of times I personally prefer not to talk about it a lot because I feel like it just kind of makes it worse. You know, I'm just saying like personally, if it's whatever's going on, a lot of times I just, I'll be quiet about it uh, just because I feel like sometimes people either get what your point of view or they'll get where you're coming from or they will take what you say and twist it, turn it, you're still misunderstood. And then on top of being misunderstood, it's even uh, a bigger deal made out of something that you really just kind of wanted to disappear in a sense, you know? Uh, uh, let me see you bear with it. Yeah, I agree, Jay. I completely agree. Yep. Yep. So, um, yeah, Jay's making some really good points, and I'm sure you guys will um, check out his comments in the live chat uh, post um, this, or if you guys are catching it, catching it live, but... Yeah, it was just so many um, allegations that were thrown out that Michael Jackson really did. If you guys see, and I'm going to leave the links uh, so you guys can check it out and form your own opinions. But he did, you know, uh, bring up a lot of things that were said about him that were false. Like, I think he, in a sense, had kind of finally, not yeah, I guess you could say reached his boiling point to a certain degree and just felt like, okay, well, maybe if I do, if I br let people in, which was his attempt, you know, I let people in and they can see the real me and see that so much stuff that's said about me, said about Neverland, said about X, Y, Z is just simply not the truth. Then, you know, you know, I'm thinking in his mind that he was feeling like, okay, maybe some of all that crazy stuff that the tabloids say will subside of it because people be able to see the real me. And he was just not given that opportunity, not at all by uh, Bashir. But, okay, so to get more into, that was like my overview. <laughs> that was my long overview, you guys, but to actually get more into the footage that you were never meant to see. So um, one thing I thought was interesting, well, it was actually several things I thought was interesting, but um, there was always you know, the tabloids would always cover uh, Michael Jackson's children and how they were all veiled and, and throw that in with the whole, you know, Michael Jackson's weird and look how he has his kids dressed. Look how they're all, you know, walking around here looking weird, uh, you know, with, with veils on and all that. And I, rec you know, I recall that amount of coverage um, that the press would give his kids when they were small. But if they had actually, ooh, oh, I hope it didn't go out, you guys. Can you guys see me? Sorry. I had some pop up on my screen uh, and I don't even have my full battery. God damn it. Oh, excuse me. Um, 
hopefully this will not end. I hope not. Um, but my battery's a little low. I thought I had a full. But anyway, um, but yeah, so just to touch on with his kids. Okay, good, good, good. Thanks, Jack. I'm glad I'm good. You guys can see me. Um, but just to even touch on with his kids, um, how they were like uh, veiled and stuff. First of all, I get that. If someone has just, you know, like I always like to use my example of lottery winners, but just think about it. If you are somebody, you come into a lot of money um, or just whatever, you have a certain amount of press, fame surrounding you, you know, after the woohoo, yay, you, you know, you're excited or, or, you know, you're living the life. There are other concerns that come along with that. Like the whole idea of, you know, more money, more problems, more with Michael Jackson, more fame, more, more issues. Uh, with that. First of all, the idea to cover his children uh, was not even his idea. That was actually the idea of Debbie Rowe, who was concerned with good reason. You know, I completely, I would understand that, um, where she was worried about like, what if somebody tries to kidnap the kids? Like, you know, like um, he, you know, his level of fame was really in its own stratosphere, as I like to say. His he, you know, Michael Jackson could not do little simple things that other celebrities could do if they put on a baseball cap or sunglasses or, you know, little simple things that we take for granted. Um, and he had just that much coverage. So I can understand for a mother to feel like, okay, well, the concern is, you know, we know how much coverage you get. Let's not have the kids face all over. You know, it wasn't that Michael Jackson wasn't proud of his kids. It wasn't that... Um, he wanted them to look, you know, weird or whatever. It was just more so like a safety issue, safety concerns with good reason. Um, you know, shoot, when uh, big whatever, mega ball, jackpot, somebody wins, sometimes people don't even want their, their images or whatever covered because they're like, okay, now they have to worry about this person, that person um, kind of coming at them. Yeah, that was, um, no, so that was, no, that was actually, that was actually her idea. And she said that, um, she said that the idea to, to cover the kids, to, you know, kind of have them like that was her idea. And Michael Jackson, uh, he agreed. He said he promised her that, 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 that he would do that. So, um, but just a lot of stuff that we assume, you know, was one way Michael Jackson was super open, super candid. And in this, um, the footage you were never supposed to seen to have seen, you know, Michael Jackson, like he literally kind of addresses all of these different um, false, um, I don't even want to say false allegations, you know, like just, just what the press has created, you know, all these false rumors, uh, Michael Jackson does this, he does that, like he addressed those. And even as far as like his plastic surgery that uh, Bashir wanted to go really heavy into, like Bashir didn't want to cover or talk about or and really get into the fact that Michael Jackson did have a skin disease. He did have vitiligo. He did experience second and third degree burns that he had to have skin grafts for. Um, with his scalp and just a lot of stuff. Um, and I just, it, I just thought it was really sad. I can't see. Michael has a tag. Suits, I could barely see, but okay. Um, I'm gonna go back. Uh, oh yeah, and shout out to Cameron, hey. Cameron, um, I don't know if you had your I think you were the one that was talking about your Instagram, that you were um, doing the Michael Jackson impersonation stuff on your Instagram. So you guys do check out uh, Cameron as well, but he just left a good comment in the chat as well. So you guys can check that out. Um, but yeah, just a lot of stuff. It was, it was a lot. And so what, yeah, and Debbie Rowe, she, she was very open, very candid with the stuff and how she said that Michael Jackson was very heartbroken very upset after he and Lisa Marie separated after they divorced. And, and I think a lot of people that, you know, are married and, and experience a divorce, a lot of times people can feel like, you know, 
that's it for them in terms of the opportunity to do X, Y, and Z. And he did want to be a father. He did want to at least have that experience that, and that was Debbie Rowe that, uh, that, as she said, that that was her idea. She told him, well, you know, you can still be a father. And she said that he looked very puzzled. Like, what are you saying? And she was, she wanted to, um, she said he had been a good person, a good friend. They'd known each other for over 20 plus years. She knew what a great person he was, a great father. And she, you know, wanted, wanted to, uh, experience that with him yep yes he did yep michael jackson was always very clean very um very fly yes definitely uh, and very original too extremely original um but yeah a lot of different things i'm like trying to think of all the different things but it was so much it was like i say from the neverland ranch and for a lot of you all that let's just say you're not MJ fans, but you come across this video and may have thought like, well, why, you know, why did he always have kids around? Like Michael Jackson explained, and I could get that, that with children being innocent, a lot of them don't have the motive, don't have the motives that adults do um, when it came to wanting to be around Michael Jackson. You know, like a lot of the kids were just happy to enjoy his company, to experience the Neverland Ranch to laugh at certain, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't as motivated as what, cause everybody had something to profit from being Michael Jackson's friend or just being around him in general. And, you know, kids seem to have more of a sincere type of interaction uh, with him. But not just that, he kept kids around as well for the Neverland Ranch because it did so, did so much good. And I didn't know that. And I'm be super honest, like, because I would think, even though I never believed, never thought that Michael Jackson um, did any of the, the things that was alleged, but I just felt like, okay, well, you know, he's just keep the kids away because he's not, the, the press is not cutting him any slack. Every time he turns around, it's a lawsuit, you know, he should just keep them away. But I see why not. Michael Jackson was a huge humanitarian. Um, and he saw firsthand, even though the media didn't really want to cover that, but he would have busloads of kids, like I say, from the inner city, from the Make-A-Wish Foundation, coming in all the time to spend time there um, and enjoy the rides, enjoy the, the animals, to meet him. Just very, you know, like a really, really good experience. And for him, he said that made it worth it. Um, and each year he put a lot of money into just the upkeep of that millions of dollars into the upkeep of Neverland. And like he said, for him, it was worth it. Um, but just very strong. I would say that Michael Jackson, incredibly, uh, mentally tough. Um, but I think everyone kind of eventually reaches their, their breaking point in some way, shape or form. But, um, I think he was extremely, well, he kind of lived an isolated existence anyway because of the level of of fame that he was at he just really was not i don't even think too many celebrities could identify with his level of fame you know what i mean like they not that they don't get recognized or whatever but like he could not do very simple things like he couldn't and even debbie rowe said that for her you know because he did marry debbie rowe but she said for her, she needed to make her split from it because she said she just was not used to that level of, like she wasn't used to not being able to go to the grocery store, not being able to do simple things for herself. And she said, Michael Jackson was extremely generous and always like, oh, well, don't worry about it. We can have. But she's like, no, I wanna be able to do that for myself. And um, even in an interview that Lisa Marie Presley um, had gave, she herself even said that, it was like, unlike anything she had ever experienced, you know, to the point where she, she felt like, I don't know who, I don't know if it was uh, Diane Sawyer, or I don't know who had interviewed her. I, I have to go back and see, cause I don't want to get it wrong, but um, yep. Yep, it is on YouTube. It is. Um, so you guys can check that out. 
um, as well. I'm going to try to, like I say, after this live ends, I'm going to try to make sure I put some links, make it easy for you guys so you all don't have to, uh, you know, comb through YouTube trying to find, you know, certain things, try to make it a little easier for you guys. But even, but just to go back, but even Lisa Marie Presley has stated to Diane Sawyer or somebody, I can't remember who it was. I'll have to go back. I really hate mentioning it and not knowing exactly or remembering exactly who she was interviewed by, but she had even was, you know, recalling her relationship, her marriage with Michael Jackson. She said that for her, she was not even used to that level of fame. Like it was just uh, too much. And she said she was uh, treated or she said she felt like she was being treated like and this was her words, like a freak of nature or something like, you know, she was being treated very oddly. Um, so, you know, Michael Jack, he, he was mentally tough. He dealt with a lot, like celebrated on one end. And then, you know, people celebrate you. Oh, you're the greatest. And then the next minute they turn around and you're this, you're extra wide. You're like he was very, very uh, mentally tough. I didn't know he created vlogs. I think, but I'm I'm gonna go back and and afterwards and really take the time to read um, a lot of these really good comments. And I'm just trying to make sure I don't want my thing to die. Um, <laughs> Cause what had popped up before was that um, low battery little message thing. But a lot of good information um, is being left in the chats, you guys. So do go down into the chat, the live chat, um, and check it out. And then for those of you all that do not speak. Um, the English language um, after the video processes, it should give you the Google Translate option. Um, if you guys are not being given that, I might have to watch some Google. I might have to go to Google Help or whatever uh, YouTube Help Center or something and see <laughs> and see how do I make it available in different languages if I'm not. But I thought that I was, but I don't know. You guys, let me know. Um, what else? What else? It was just so much content, you guys. It was so much that was covered on this. And I really want you guys to watch it for yourselves, regardless whether you have formed whatever opinion about Michael Jackson. You know, I, I believe everyone has the power to, to think how they want to think, feel how they want to feel. I'm just giving my opinion. Uh, this is my reaction to the footage you were never uh, meant to see. And like I say, it's just really gross and disgusting that Bashir like would say, like praise him, like, oh, Michael Jackson, you know, this is just, you know, seeing you around these kids is almost like a spiritual experience. It's almost like, you know, like really like, and he, and I believe he was being honest when he was saying those things to Michael Jackson. He was being honest. When he wasn't being honest was when he went back and edited everything and gave his little commentary. Oh, this place is dangerous for, you know, like, it's just horrible. It was so night and day. Um, definitely slander, definitely a character assassination. I don't know if, you know, now I'm coming with my conspiracy theories. I don't know if Bashir was um, somebody approached Bashir and said like this is what I'd like for you to do and offered him money or if he was just a really or both he, or, you know they offered him and he's just a really uh, low level sluggy sluggish uh, trashy type of human being that would would do that but I think it was just just sad just very sad uh, to watch Michael Jackson wasn't someone who did a ton of interviews so when he would do it you know every here and there but I see why I see why I see why aside from reporters being rude in the type of questions they would ask like then you have the worst case scenario which is Bashir turning an interview upside down inside out and it resulting in a two-year trial that's horrible absolutely horrible uh, how can we get the, get the same thing that Prince is saying? Yeah, he's horrible. And so, and I'm, for those of you all that are uh, fans of the Royals or just have been following, uh-oh, can you guys still see me? I hope so. Okay, so that was like my phone letting me know, like, 
um, you're running low. But um, even the way that he, even the way that Bashir gained access to Princess Diana, that was trashy, okay? He lied, pretended like he, whatever documents were legit and I guess by pretending or having those falsified documents, they allowed him into the circle. And by being in that circle, he was able to talk to uh, Diana firsthand and, you know, tell her, you know, if you, you know, I, I don't know what he said to her exactly, but somehow he was, must have been an excellent talker and he was able to have her gain his trust. And after he did that interview with her, then they say he just kind of blew up. And in Europe, a lot of important people suddenly, of course, you know, he just got me from interviewing uh, Princess Diana, Lady Diana. Okay, we sure you give me an interview. And then from there, he just kind of blew up. Um, but just horrible, 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 horrible. Um, you know, I don't know if he's remorseful, how he, you know, retrospect where he's at. But I think that he really sh is unfortunate that he didn't stop to think like, okay, well, you know, my career may be surging up, but like, what am I doing to people? Like, am I really like destroying people on my way, you know, climbing that, that ladder? I don't, it's just horrible. But this was definitely worth you guys checking out. I don't want this to cut off. I don't even know how long this live has been. Oh, 41 minutes, okay. Longer than, <laughs> a little bit longer than I thought. Not too bad, my phone is actually doing damned good. Excuse my French, it's doing pretty good um, that it didn't go out yet. I've actually, um, 41 minutes it did go out um, and it wasn't at a full battery, so I got lucky. Um, but yeah, so really I would like for you guys to check it out. Um, it was so much content, dang. Uh, the Neverland Ranch, the kids, um, his children, you know, wearing the, the disguises, but that was for a good dog on reason. Um, like I mentioned before, even lottery winners would want to put on a baseball cap, a wig, sunglasses, if they have to do a press, uh, you know, press interview for how much money they won because they know along with that money comes other problems. Oh, and then also really quickly too, in that, in that documentary, they show like they were trying to show how Michael Jackson was putting his children um, in a dangerous situation by taking them to the zoo. And they were really like flogged with all of the, the press and, and people. And like Michael Jackson said, like he has gone to the zoo many, many times and usually the zoo is closed. He was under the impression when he showed up there with his children and, and Bashir was supposed to catch this, you know, uh, document this, uh, that, he thought that it was going to be closed off to the public, that his kids could enjoy um, the zoo, but it was that was not the situation at all. And instead of the reality of the situation being shown, it wasn't. It was spun in a way of like, oh, look, these kids shouldn't even be here. Why does he even have these? You know what I mean? Like it was just, it was sad to watch. It was really sad to watch. Michael Jackson was very open, um, and his what he was hoping to be the outcome, the complete opposite uh, happened. He was hoping that he could be more open to people. A lot of times he would never actually really speak on all the crazy rumors and Michael, you know, all this crazy stuff that the tabloids cover. He thought that he would, you know, be able to kind of like speak on that and have his say and allow people to, to decide for themselves and to show them like, this is actually reality. This is what you've heard, but this is what it is. And he was not given that opportunity. In fact, clearly Bashir already had an angle before the interview ever started. Like he already knew what his angle was going to be. He already knew um, because there's no way that that kind of hack job would have been done unless he pre, it was already pre set out. Like, this is what I want to cut. Be like, this is what I would like to convey to the people. So very sad. MJ, rough, it was, it was, uh, like I say, your girl is a little, um, a little softy, um, but it was, you know, rough for me to watch. And, and like I said, I completely do relate to uh, MJ in that I am someone who, like I say, there's a lot of 
drama, whatever's going on. A lot of times I will not, you know how like when something happens, someone wants to, let's say two people get into it. One person wants to run and tell mutual friends, such and such that, you know, give their side of the story. And the, like, I'm someone who I won't do that. <laughs> I won't do that because I know and I've learned that a lot of times when you do that, either people will get it or they won't. And even if they get it or they don't, you're still like adding more fuel to the fire and just making things worse. Like, you know the truth, you know your side, like just, but I think Michael Jackson had kind of reached his, um, right? Yep, I'm the same way. Yep, I'm the same way as you, Jay. I just kind of close out on stuff like that. Um, but I think Michael Jackson had kind of reached his boiling point in a sense, you know, with everything or, or maybe not, maybe it wasn't his boiling point. Maybe it was just him saying to himself, okay, well, if I'm invite people in, you know, they've heard X, Y, and Z, but if I invite people in and I really just kind of open up um, to them, like really just, just talk and I, I open my heart, I let them, you know, know what's going on with me, then I'll be given a fair shake or, you know, let people decide for themselves and not what is written in the tabloids was said by the press and nope, Bashir gained his trust, talked a good talk while he was there. And then what he put out and the things that he said was completely like him narrating over the documentary was just horrible. And like the whole time he's, you know, praising this and that, oh, and great. And I see, and I, and I think he was being honest at that point, but not, he was not being honest when he edited and put out the final um, version um, to release to the public to, to see and watch. Um, living with Michael Jackson, I think it was called, was not at all the truth. So you guys check it out for yourselves. And then of course, I'm going to do my, uh, my usual where I'm going to turn away. Yeah, check it out. Um, like I say, definitely read the good comments that are left down below. Uh, I will check that out. I definitely will, Jay. Thank you. I will definitely check that out. Um, but yeah, you guys check it out for yourselves, whatever your opinion of MJ, whatever that may be, um, just still, you know, watch, at least you could say if you did see Bashir's and then you did see the real full version, the unedited version, um, come up with your own opinions, but definitely don't base any of your opinions off of what Bashir put out and, and it was just horrible just really horrible took a lot of things that really sad um but anyway so let me escape from this and if I could escape from that and then you guys um so with this I always do my usual if you guys have not checked it out yet already um this is just my website like I said lilamichelle.com on there and I'm still gonna update the merch hopefully this weekend I'll have some new stuff that you guys can check out and then I'm gonna start wearing some of my stuff too oh thanks love you too thank you Jay appreciate ya oh thank you same to you and really I should make you a moderator if you are <laughs> if you're not too busy I might make you a moderator if that's what you know because you're great you have excellent um uh yep you have excellent, and who is the That's Marquise. Hey, Marquise. Hey, hey. Marquise is saying hey to everyone. Um, but what was I saying? Yeah, so, but yeah, you guys are excellent. But yeah, hopefully this weekend I'll have a lot of the merch updated. And I'm like I say, forgive the pricing because that's not how I would have it if I, if I could. It's just that because I'm using a middleman, um uh, prices are set a certain way that i don't really have that much control over believe it or not yep 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 great to see you as well um so you guys can like i said you could always use the um the menu here and navigate through it i didn't really actually mean to do that but that just kind of goes straight to the merch that i have on there and then i think it's like yeah, so it's stuck on there. 
um but that really wasn't what i was trying to pull up i was really just trying to show you guys the website merch media um and you guys still forget about what the press was going on with the stuff still go check out the tiktok you guys while it's you know still there um check out the tiktok i did a double look because i'm like did my phone die um <laughs> Check out the TikTok. Check out um, where you guys are already on YouTube. You guys can also check out my Instagram. I don't have a million pics up. I will be, it is my goal to post more regularly, even at, even if I have to schedule, but I kind of like to take things, you know, take pictures and then upload or whatever I'm doing, you know, like I like it to kind of be fresh, but my goal is to be more regular with the Instagram, but you guys can follow me on Instagram. It is I am Leela Michelle. And then you guys can always uh, contact me as well. Um, you can subscribe or go straight up here to contact. And if my computer wasn't slow, you guys will see here that my email address is lelamichelle3 at gmail.com. I check it out all the time. Um, so you guys could leave me um, an email or even if you fill this box out, it still goes to lelamichelle3 at gmail.com. Uh, but if you want to subscribe, you can do it that way. And then lastly, my TikTok. Um, like I say, I kind of cover um, celebrities and entertainment stuff, but all of it kind of moves back to uh, to MJ. So, um, well, not all of it, but a lot of it you'll notice, like some way, shape, or form, it moves back to uh, my Jackson. But it's a lot of content on there, so you guys can feel free to peruse it and hopefully give me a follow and i will see you guys later thank you guys so much thank you jay marquise and then who else was it somebody else um i wanted to give you a shout out i forgot somebody else was on there um who said something but anyway thanks all who contributed to today's uh live stream you guys are excellent you guys showed up and showed out and um like i say anybody who checks this live stream out after the fact Cameron, that's who it was. Thank you, Jay. See, Jay be on it. He knows. Um, and shout out to Cameron um, as well. So, thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Jay. Well, you helped to make it amazing. So, I appreciate it. Um, but I will see you guys later. It was fun. I'll check you guys out later. Bye. Thank you.